It's on camera, we'll get it later. Uh oh. We're gonna delete the first.
Head back toward me and go. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Look at that thing. Is that hook right there? It's like it's hung up on the grass at the bottom. Yeah. But then, as soon as you feel that tug, <laughs> you know it's on. It's not. And by no means, don't hold on to the line when you pull. It'll burn your fingers. Awesome. They'll give, they'll, they'll give it for a run. Lahote and cutthroats, once thought to be an extinct species, is mostly associated with the pyramid lake monsters, with the current world record being 41 pounds. But a little ways north, in Washington state, there are many alkaline lakes that have been stocked with these same fish. While we don't boast 40 pound fish, our state record is a not so shabby 18 pounds. So with the forecasts of below freezing weather and gusts up to 30 miles per hour, we loaded the minivan in search of our own giants.
cold temperatures numbed our hands and faces. The strong wind and waves made waiting along the shoreline difficult, tangling our lines and pushing our casts back into our faces. During the day, the bright sun seemed to push the fish deeper and even further out of reach. It helped to find places it dropped off, but this usually meant you had steep walls behind you. With a little persistence and a lot of luck, we were able to dial in our locations and presentations.
<laughs> it's like I want to go back to my safety. Yeah, I don't know. It might be on that. That's okay. <laughs> I'm not seeing that one. Like twins, man. <laughs> That's a great fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Upper river, maybe. Upper river. Back to the deep. <laughs> In June, the kids and I loaded the minivan with our fishing rods, camping gear, and our Watermaster Bruin, and headed off to float the John Day River. We hadn't gotten down the road more than 30 minutes when we got a call. We had left all the water for the trip yep. on the deck. So, Oops. now B-Beth is... Uh, very nicely bringing all the water to us. We're meeting her in uh, on the Mercer Island QSC, and uh, and then we'll get to get going. it 
to Service Creek, setting up the uh, Exped City. We decided to get a head start on the morning by spending some time assembling the raft before bed. The next morning, we finished setting up the raft, loaded it with our gear, and set off for our five-day camping trip. What time is it? Uh, I think it's like about 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And we're... Leaving Service Creek Campground. Yep. The John Day River is renowned as a smallmouth fishery, and I was excited to have some fun, easy fishing the kids could enjoy during our floats. Earlier that week, the river had bumped up due to rain, and the extra cold water seemed to put the fish off. Gigantic smallmouth on the John Day River. Somewhere in there, there's a fish. All right. Mar has now landed the biggest fish so far. Bean is unhooking it for her. Oh, Dad just caught a fish and then he dropped it. We did the trip in five days, which coupled with the higher river flows made for shorter days bye bye. in the raft. This gave us a lot more time for relaxing and playing in camp. I don't know. And more time for pre-dinner naps. For food on this trip, I went easy. I brought more fresh stuff for breakfast like eggs, bagels, tortillas, but mostly we ate freeze-dried food for dinners. And then crackers, tuna, peanut butter, tortilla wraps for lunch. On our trips, everyone's expected to help. From setting up tents, sleeping area, to cleaning dishes and helping load the boat. With everything packed, it was time to set off and see what the river had in store for us. Peekaboo moon in Arapeka Bay The sun goes down on a perfect day Leave the river running by Beaver Hole Six pack living with a fishing pole Arapeka Bay, Arapeka Bay Bed your bottom daughter up the back someday with temperatures in the mid 80s, the kids spent a lot of time swimming along the raft. The water was quite chilly, so they only lasted so long. At our second camp, there was a giant back eddy. After taking a few group laps around it together, I let the kids play and experiment with the river currents, getting a feel for how the main current felt and how to work with the river instead of against it. On most of our trips, we normally stick everyone in one tent, but this time, our youngest decided she'd had enough of someone snoring and decided to use a single tent. This allowed me to take one of my favorite two-person tents, the X-Pad Outer Space 2, which has a huge vestibule. That evening after dinner, we did a little fishing. And then we followed a trail out of camp up into the hills for a little hike. Just all around, yeah. All right, what's today? Today is... Today's Thursday. 
We are day three. We're on the water at 9.40. Um, there's already an upstream wind, so I predict that we will do a lot of extra rowing to get through today. Um, today is also the day that we get to go through the biggest rapid. Um, so that should be a class two plus. We'll get to see what that's like. Um, and also there's a pit toilet very soon. So those of us that have held it get to use a real toilet. You might be wondering, what do you do if there's no bathroom? Your first thought might be dig a hole. If you're an experienced camper, you might even say 200 feet from camp, trail, or water. There are many systems that rafters use. We opted to go with wag bags. These are basically sealable garbage bags that you do your business in. There's enough room for up to two. Each one contains a powder to try and eliminate odors. And then we store everything in a paint book that has a sealable lid. You might think to yourself, ew, that's gross. I just bury it. But the problem with this is with all the traffic on the river, every campsite becomes littered with toilet paper, and you start finding human waste everywhere. The other reason is that it is a rule on the river, and there are rangers that float and check your raft. The only rapid of note on this stretch was the Burnt Ranch Rapids. The map said it could be anywhere from a class two to a class three. Prepared for a wet ride, we battened down the hatches and took it on. It ended up just being a class two and not even a very splashy class two. Still, it was a nice break for the more gentle stretches. While there are lots of campsites along the river, not all campsites are created equal. As you traveled down the river, we had three criteria for a campsite. One, there had to be some sort of shade. Two, there had to be a swimming area. And three, there had to be a flattish spot for the tents. And a bonus is that it had some good fishing nearby. Wow, monster cast. <laughs> That's a little better. Yeah. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, came off. It's all right, they're there. Oh, back on. Nice. Nice. Okay. First bass caught on the fly for Sabina. Nothing says fun like trying to shine your headlamp in your sister's face. As each day progressed, we began to find that rhythm, loading and unloading, setting up and breaking down. Each day we marveled at the wildlife, the unfolding landscape, the basalt formations, the new twists and turns of the river. The raft became a second home. The kids knew their space, how they liked to arrange it, and how to be comfortable for the day. It became part playground and part couch. Now just yourself remain. Look in my eyes, there's no need to explain. You'll never wear those chains again. What are you going to do with all this freedom? What are you going to do with all this? 
From the earliest age, my kids have always enjoyed rooting around in nature, turning over rocks on the beach or holding worms and slugs. We spent the afternoon catching frogs and watching a snake try and hunt dinner. Mm -hmm. With it being the last day on the river, I got up early to soak up as much of it as I could, enjoying a cup of coffee and watching the sun come up. Time to get up. After watching me row for four days, the girls decided they wanted to give it a try too. I wasn't sure how well it would work, but after a little bit of instruction, they got it down. I was able to enjoy the front seat and fish. With the river being up and cold, the bass fishing had been off that week. As the water came down and warmed up, the final day we were able to dial in the fishing. With my soul full after spending a week with the kids, we packed up. While we drove home and re-entered life again, my mind was already turning on what our next trip would be. Over the years, I'd heard of the St. Joe River, famed for its stunning beauty and teeming with wild cutthroat, but for some reason, I always seemed to travel past it to other rivers. This year started like other years, fishing trip planned to fish a famous tailwater in Utah, but due to unforeseen circumstances, I had to cancel my trip. Then, with a few weeks notice, my schedule magically cleared, and I rounded up a few friends to go explore central Idaho. St. Joe Road and we are about 10 miles from Avery and we are drooling as we drive up next to the road. Um, Brian pulled the short straw and he has to drive so I get to look at the uh, all the water. Ooh, look at that run! Jump around, jump around, jump around. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Using uh, using my three weight here, and 
new OPST smooth line. Let's bring it in just a little bit closer here. That's a nice, nice cutty. Look at that. Let's see what he took. Uh, <laughs> took my uh, October caddis. <sighs> Wet fly. And what do you guys? Goodbye, Mr. Fish. After we got a few hours of fishing in, we went back to camp and ate a quick dinner, hung out around the fire, and then crashed, dreaming about our first full day out on the water. The next morning, we decided to explore the upper stretch of the river. We drove about 20 miles upriver and looked for a good place to start. It took us a little bit to figure out what kind of water the fish were holding in. Once we did, though, it was some fantastic fishing. Day two on the Joe. Uh, it's been an awesome day today. Uh, we fished um, out of a campground and hiked maybe 100 yards. Probably caught over 30 fish in that 100 yards. Caught a couple of nice ones. We're gonna fish this run, sort of a shadowy canyon here. Hoping along the bank over there, there's some fish lying in that darker water, but we'll see. What an amazing way to kick off our trip. Gorgeous scenery, too many fish to count, and getting to hang out with friends on the river and around the campfire. The next day, we decided we would hike a two mile stretch of the river, leaving cars at both ends. The day before, we didn't see a single angler on the river, despite being close to the campground. So we were a little surprised to round the bend and find an angler already ahead of us, and that he had two buddies an hour ahead of him. Not sure if we should turn around and fish somewhere else or press on, we made the choice to keep going. Little did we know that we were about to get into some crazy good fish. Thinking we were really clever, we decided to fish a section that was harder to get to and less pressure. Well, we weren't the only brilliant ones to think of this, and after 30 minutes we ran into a guy setting up on a run. We chatted with him briefly and found out that two of his buddies were about an hour ahead of him. We decided we would try and push ahead of them. Fortunately, it didn't take us very long to catch up. After talking to them for a bit and swapping fishing stories, they decided to turn around and head back downstream. 
so we lucked out and had the rest of the river to ourselves. After we caught fish after fish, we decided we should keep moving up river. Just around the corner was a gorgeous flat. The forest grew right to the water's edge. Where the trees couldn't grow, ferns and moss filled every nook and cranny. And of course, there were rising fish. After trying our hand at throwing dries to those rising fish, we moved up into the riffle. The fishing, if you can believe it, got even better. Well, that's not gonna stay. This is like a, this is like an hors d'oeuvre. Oh, that's a good sized fish. You just have a big dead. For that kind of thinking. If you have trouble up there, I can net it down here. Don't do that. I'm putting. Oh boy. Hey, I don't know what 
<laughs> oh, no. That's how you release the boys. Ready? Oh, did it just come out? Yep. Found the hole. The re hole. Don't lose it. Holy what? Oh my gosh. Mark, 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 mark. <laughs> Not as big as yours, but good size. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to land him from here. Okay, bring him around, bring him around, bring him around. <laughs> oh, please don't get off. Ready? Yep, yep. Right up. Oh, you look bigger. <laughs> <laughs> After Brian caught a bunch of fish, it was my turn up on the log. Now, before I show you my best fish of the trip, I wanted to talk about the camp pool. A camp pool is one of those pools that sits just outside a camp. It doesn't get the respect that other pools get. Maybe because it's taken for granted, or maybe it gets a bad rap. When I'm at home, I always have a hard time getting out of bed. But when I'm fishing, I usually wake up before my alarm, sometimes several times but not everyone I fish with likes to get up early. So this is where the camp pool really saves the day. I can get up early, fish a few hours, catch a few fish before anyone wakes up. This was my camp pool. If you've been lucky enough to catch a lot of fish in a day, you start to get a sense of size when you set the hook. When I set the hook, and all I felt were head shakes, I knew I was into a good one. As the fish flashed near the surface, and I saw the orange belly and gill plates, I knew it was not only my biggest fish, but the most spectacularly colored fish I had caught on the trip. While I held it in my hands and let it recover, Brian captured these beautiful shots. On our last day, we decided to try our hand searching for some of those fabled bull trout. Armed with some new flies and some new places to search, we set out. As we drifted and stripped streamers around boulders and drop-offs, the cutthroat started rising around us. Unable to resist the lure, we switched back to cutthroat fare. We threw dry flies, nipped, 
pulled small streamers. And you guessed it, the fishing was fantastic. Got him! Oh, shoot. All great things must come to an end, and so did our trip. While we drove out, we laughed at the memories of places we fished, and made plans about the places we didn't. Not even home, we were already dreaming about our next trip back. Shining on